In a deeply superstitious country, this is a dark and fearsome demon that can bring untold trouble. Some here believe the snake embodies an evil old woman who snatches babies in the night. Mythology aside, the Papuan Taipan is one of the deadliest reptiles in the world. Remarkably, in some areas here, venomous snakes kill more people than malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV AIDS. In this very poor country, getting help is out of reach for many snake bite victims. The consequences of that can be devastating. For the past decade, one man's been trying to change that. He's a scientist, medic, teacher, and snake handler, and he's very lucky to still be around. David Williams' single-handed mission to save lives in Papua New Guinea will almost cost him his own. Although it's not a snake that picks fights, it's a snake that finishes them. It's David Williams, huh? My journey with him will also uncover corruption and incompetence in Papua New Guinea, a scourge that's endangering the lives of its people. And this is about proper first aid for snake bites. All right, so we just want to get in before the snake bite season starts properly. About an hour's drive from Port Moresby, villagers gather for advice from the man they call the doctor. All right, suppose simpler snake emic came you, all right? David Williams Most is a clinical toxinologist who heads Melbourne University's anti-venom unit in PNG. Unlike right. most of his peers, now, he's also a herpetologist and skilled right. at dealing with snakes. And if a person stays very still and has this pressure put on after the snake's bitten them, it will slow down the poison. David Williams has come also to inspect the village's tiny health centre Okay, so let's have a look inside, mate. Just want Steve to see what you've got to work with. There seems to be no shortage of medicine, but what they need most is missing. You still don't have any antivenoms here? Uh, no, doctor. Without a fridge, the clinic can't store snake antivenom, and there's often no transport for a dash to Port Moresby. Even the clinic's nurse was a casualty. She died along with her unborn baby. It's one of the very few conditions where you can wake up perfectly healthy in the morning, come into contact with a snake after breakfast and be dead in a box by nightfall. Well, Mekia district, um, it's not very far from Port Moresby, about 100 kilometres, but it has some of the highest incidence rates and mortality rates for snake bite anywhere in the world. There's a gentleman who's turned up here last night. He was out hunting in the bush and got himself bitten by a death adder. The man will live so, because the clinic has a gas-powered right. fridge and crucial antivenom. Just, just follow my finger up that way. OK, that's really good. And just keep your forehead still. The bite victim is a lucky man. In this country, 90% of health centres don't stock the antivenom. Yeah, well, they don't have to worry because you'll be going home tomorrow. But David Williams right. has some spare vials donated by his contacts in Australia. Even though it's a year out of date, it's perfectly OK. In fact, in Moresby, we've given people antivenoms that were 10 years out of date because we've had nothing else, and that's worked. It's a national tragedy. No one here can tell you exactly how many people die from snake bites. It could be as many as 600 a year across the country. Most people here work in their gardens and they don't wear footwear. They, they've never worn shoes a day in their lives. So that makes them especially vulnerable to things that they might tread on. Okay, this is how people get bitten by snakes because a snake comes out in the morning like that, curls up, goes to sleep. Nobody sees it. And once you get within two or three metres, the snake becomes defensive. 
Ah, get out, buddy. Alrighty, he's cold as mate. Just hold that bag open. Nice and low to the ground. Before he gets too cranky. Very good. So that's it, you bagged your first type in. <laughs> it's too easy. Okay. David Williams doesn't do this for thrills, nor does he relish the danger. It's an essential part of his job. Okay. Oh. At his so-called snake house at the back of Port Moresby General Hospital, he's on his milk run with Papuan taipans. It's the pinnacle of evolution in the, the Australasian region. It has the longest fangs, the largest venom supply, the most toxic venoms, and probably the worst temper. <laughs> That's called not happy jam. <laughs> Look at that. Holy crap. There's enough there to kill all of us and everybody on this campus and then still have some to spare. This is one of half a dozen taipans David Williams will milk today for his landmark research project. So the venom we're collecting here is actually going to be used to produce an experimental anti-venom against Papuan taipan venom. And the hope is that it will be as safe and effective as the current products, but significantly less expensive. His aim is to make freeze-dried antivenom so that it won't need refrigeration. But some of the donors in his project are less than willing participants. He's gonna play up. Why aren't you happy with me? To find out more about this anti-venom shortage, I went to Port Moresby General Hospital. And how often do you get snake bite victims that need to be admitted to intensive care? We receive snake bite uh, victims every day, every day coming through the hospital, especially the emergency department. Sister Patricia Rorella is the emergency ward head nurse. She takes me to the medicine fridge. How many should you have in there? We should have um, three each, especially the polyvalent. We should have three each. Otherwise, the whole lot of them, we should be having enough stock in our fridge. This is the hospital's fourth shortage of antivenom in the last 12 months. Often, the fridge is bare. The government of Papua New Guinea simply can't afford to buy all the antivenom they need. The biggest issue is the cost of the Australian antivenoms. In 1972, it cost $40 for a vial of antivenom. In 1988, it cost about $200. Now, it costs over $2,000. There we go. Alrighty. That's a nice looking snake. I've invested a lot of time and a lot of effort here and every time we go out into the bush and we grab one of these snakes by the tail, you fully have to expect that this is the snake that's going to bite you and it's going to kill you. They were prophetic words. Less than an hour later, as I prepared to say a few lines to camera, just out of shot, David Williams was in trouble. Oh, mate. Ah, fuck. Okay. You right? It's got now, big bit. Shit. David Williams knows the deadly venom is already in his body. While we stand in shock, a cool headed scientist secures the reptile. Come on, hurry, guys. <clears throat> what colour? No. <clears throat> um, the esky, the blue bag. <clears throat> Someone come and get me food off. All right, start from here and go down. Start from the, over the bite, yeah. Tight. I need a bit of uh, 
Yeah. Any other bandages? Get another bandage. More bandages. <clears throat> yep. As many as you have to. <clears throat> Get rid of the sock. Get rid of the sock. And another bandage starting higher up. Yep. <clears throat> seconds get everything in the car <clears throat> we're leaving we're heading back to Port Moresby General Hospital and then Steve will come and get you okay bye I gotta go bye okay you're in the back <clears throat> yeah. get in there Within a matter of minutes, David Williams is dangerously ill. He's having an allergic reaction to the venom and is lapsing into anaphylactic shock. All right, David, we've almost reached the motorway, mate. Not far now. His vision is blurred. His airway is tightening. He has trouble breathing and speaking. His blood pressure is dropping. All right, Dave, we're almost there, mate. Without anti-venom, he will certainly die. <coughs> Trolley's bro. Trolley. Trolley. Snake bite. Snake bite. Brats, help. Help. Big pillar, eh? Big pillar. Get on the other side. Open up now. All right, mate. We're here. We're here, mate. <coughs> Come on. Keep that leg still, huh? Keep that leg still. Leg still? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Okay, emergency, let's go. Okay, let's go. Thanks, boys. It's David Williams, huh? Yeah. Port Moresby General Hospital is a place where David Williams saves lives. Okay. Now, his own survival depends on scarce anti-venom. How much stock have you got of that? This is the this only, only while we have in stock at the moment, so the next snake bite that comes in, no venom to give. Within half an hour of receiving the anti-venom, he is coherent once more and talking to his wife and child. Yeah, much better than it was 20 minutes ago. By the end of the evening, his recovery has been remarkable. How important was that first day on the spot? Um, probably the difference between you talking to me now and you not talking to me now. Um, I think without it, you might have been giving a eulogy. by the Mac truck in the animal world, but yeah. <laughs> you get that. Looks like it. Let's have a look it's at that. It's really sore, mate. Uh, David Williams will need to convalesce for several weeks after his life-saving treatment, but the experience has left him indignant. And for a hospital like that that treats sometimes four or five snake bites in a day, for it to only have one single vial in the fridge is just not good enough. Papua New Guinea's management of its anti-venom stocks is a national disgrace. Latest figures show one quarter of its entire pharmaceutical budget is spent on importing the drug from Australian company CSL. Melbourne-based CSL has an exclusive deal to sell to a wholesaler in PNG. That company marks up the price of each vial by about $500 before supplying it to the health department. But then, up to 25% of stock simply disappears from the government medical stores. I have a tip-off that some stolen antivenom is for sale at a local chemist. My visit is secretly recorded. 
How much is it per vial? Just I want to I'm not really sure if this is the right price, but... Eight thousand five hundred? Eight thousand five hundred kina? Yeah. For all six? Just one. Hey, I've been to a chemist in town here. Yeah. And they've offered to sell me Australian anti-venom for around eight thousand kina per vial. <laughs> yeah, come in, spinner. Um, you're being ripped off, basically. I'd say it's it's probably stock stolen from the medical stores or from the health centres. David Williams has well, records of every vial of antivenom brought into the country um, and can trace okay. stolen stock. Okay, it's disappeared from the health department, been sold off by these guys back to a, a health centre. So they're paying for the stuff twice, basically, and paying for it the second time at more than double the price. One, two, three, four. I decide to go through with the deal. Eight, nine, ten. This time the pharmacist tells me it's my lucky day and offers me a vial for the equivalent of just $500. But this is from India. Yeah. Still the same? Sure. Alright, thanks for your help. Okay, see you soon. Bye. So how's the leak today? Yeah, it's okay, mate. Um, it's a bit numb, sort of like if you're given a local anaesthetic, but other than that, fine. I take my bargain purchase to David Williams for analysis. <laughs> oh yeah, you've got to be joking. Um, okay, well this is a big worry. Um, this doesn't work in Papua New Guinea, this antivenom's worthless. The only things this can be used to treat are Indian cobras, Indian crates, russels and sore-scaled vipers. This antivenom can kill people. Not only is there a black market for stolen antivenom in Papua New Guinea, but I've discovered a new illegal trade. My next stop was the health minister, Sasa Zibe. I want you to have a look in here, minister. Just uh, open up the envelope and have a look. Just take your time to, to read that. Minister, I bought that from a, a pharmacy in town here. It's Indian snake antivenom. The problem is, is that it won't treat snake bites in Papua New Guinea. And if I got bitten by a snake, and I was administered that, it might well kill me. Gee. Seriously, this is a very serious case. And uh, this is pathetic and I cannot tolerate this. Can you tell me uh, which shop you uh, bought this? Within minutes, the outraged health minister had me in tow. I am now going to the uh, city pharmacy to check the illegal anti-drug venom sold in this uh, uh, shop here. So I'm going in to check that one now. Uh, Ma'am, I think uh, what you are saying is illegal. I am the Minister for Health and uh, this can kill them. And uh, you are not supposed to sell the drug like this here. And I am now cracking down as the Minister for Health. I'm not going to tolerate my people to sell any drugs out in the street. And uh, this is to start with you. Thank you. A poor nation is throwing away millions of dollars on expensive antivenom. Those in greatest need have little hope of getting help. Papua New Guineans have got to wake up to themselves and realise that people shouldn't have to die from treatable diseases or treatable injuries like snake bite. It's completely unnecessary and they shouldn't have to put up with corruption and particularly corruption in health because that costs people lives. In a country of 800 languages and a multitude of cultures, some here believe that snake bite is just reward for those who commit adultery or steal. But a crime on a much larger scale seemingly goes unpunished. 